puppies, kitties, and finding forever homes say no more. Laura from Friends of Metro Animal Care and Control is here to tell us all about what they do. Yes, you always have so many amazing things going <laughs> yes. on to help bring awareness to uh, fostering and adopting overall. Um, tell us about this dog versus cats fundraiser that you've been doing. It's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. So at Friends here. of Mac, we've been doing a fundraising frenzy for the month of May. And so we've been asking um, all of the dog and cat lovers in the community, are you team dog or are you team cat? Um, and you vote um, with a donation for team dog or team cat. So we had an event last weekend and then we're continuing all the fundraising online through the rest of the month of May. Where are people at right now? We are doing pretty good. We raised about $4,000 for our event this oh, weekend. And I think team dog won so far. So we need all the cat lovers out there to vote um, as well and represent Present Team Cat. That's right. And this, by the way, is Basil, who's taking <laughs> treats so gently. And she yes. has been at MAC, Metro Animal Care and Control, for how long? Basil has been there since the end of December. So Whoa, she too has long. too long. She is waiting for her um, perfect family. She is such a lover. She is such a sweet dog. Um, she's about a year and a half yeah. old, and she Let's is just ready face. to cuddle. Yeah. And like you said, she oh. takes treats so very gently. So she is um, such a good girl. She is beautiful. What, she's just the velvetiest velvet hippo in the world. I know. And look at these floppy ears. Oh, okay. So soft. Uh, Friends of Mac versus yes. Mac itself. What is the difference? Yes. So Friends of Mac, we are an all-volunteer nonprofit group. Um, and so our mission as an organization is to help raise funds for Mac, which is our local animal shelter here in Davidson County. Um, so they serve about 4,000 animals each year um, so do a tremendous job at that and so we as a group of volunteers we help fundraise so that we can provide additional programming for all of the dogs and cats and other animals that come into their care. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> okay, uh, um, so you are still fundraising from that event this past weekend, correct? Yes. Pause for a cause. Pause. Mm -hmm. You said it was fabulous this last Saturday. You were supposed to come on last week, but <laughs> we had a bit of a weather snafu here on Local on 2, and that's okay. Thank you to our weather team. But yes. we do have to talk about how you're continuing to fundraise I, because it's so important. Absolutely. So I would encourage everyone to get out there and take a look at our Facebook, our Instagram pages. You can find all the details details on the fundraiser there. You can actually make your donation um, while you're on social media. And while you're out there making a donation, you can check out all the amazing adoptable animals too. So we've got that fundraiser coming or going on through the end of May and then um, always looking for additional opportunities from the community to get involved, whether it's donating, fostering, um, coming in to volunteer. So lots of great ways to get involved. And I'd love to mention that, you know, sometimes an animal will come into Mac and will have unfortunately ha has a broken yes. leg or has an eye that needs repairing mm -hmm. or whatever it might be. And the shelter, which is government run, doesn't have the funding for that. And that's where you guys come in. Mm, is there an animal that comes to mind? I'm sure there's many that you've swooped in and saved, but anything specific? Yes, so that's a big part of where all of the funds that we uh, that get donated go to is that emergency medical fund, like you mentioned. And so we actually had one of our amazing alumni um, from Mac, his name was Weebles, come out to our fundraising event this last weekend. And Weebles, um, a little over a year ago, was the beneficiary of that emergency medical support. So he had um, a congenital defect in both of his knees. And uh, through the funding that was raised, we were able to provide him with surgery that has greatly improved his quality of life. And he is thriving um, with his adoption. Family. Oh, that's so awesome. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, well, speaking of adopting, what do people need to know uh, beforehand before adopting or fostering even? Yeah, so one of the things that we encourage folks to do is to spend some time, once again, on our social media. Basil loves the treats. <laughs> on our social media pages, checking out the different animals that are there. You can read a bio about the animals and really think about, you know, what are the circumstances of your home? What kind of dog or cat will work best with your family? Um, and you can also ask the shelter staff who are wonderful. Um, you know, here's our situation in our home who would be a great match for us so we encourage you to take a look in advance um, but then also think about who's going to be a wonderful fit for your house and be open um, to who they might suggest to be a good fit for you Very That's wonderful. Good. Thank, thank you, you so much, much. And Laura basil's Basil. ready for adoption you know she you know she likes treats <laughs> yes you do and she's so sweet everyone adapt love and visit friendsofmac.org to make a difference